Hi, I'm Philip. Welcome to a presentation about meta languages for preliminary software design development. We're looking at language syntax and we're looking at how that language syntax is described using meta languages. Now, language syntax is how you write the language of a programming language, and that language or that syntax must be unambiguous. For example, only having one meaning. Now to do that, we have to have ways to describe that language. Now an example here is we have some PHP and it has an error in it. In that case, in this case, the error is the variable does not contain a dollar sign at the front. So syntactically, there's an error. What we have to do is way to describe how do you, as a programmer, recognize that that has an error? And that is described through the meta-language. So what we're really looking at is, in this section here, where you go from the source code, which is what you write, and convert that to machine code, which is all the zeros and ones, we have to have a way to translate that from source code into machine code. Now, that translation follows the syntax rules. So what we're looking at is we need a, a way to describe the syntax rule the translation follows. So as a programmer up here, you know how to write it so that the code when it's translated is translated correctly without syntax errors. So what we're going to look at is meta languages. So meta languages is is data about languages. It's and it's a way to describe how you correctly write the syntax of a programming language. And we're going to look at two syntax structure diagrams, and I'll refer to them as railway diagrams, and extended Bacchus now form, which I'll refer to as EBNF. There's also an, a Bacchus now form, which used to be in the preliminary NHSC software design development course, but they removed it and, and now only have EBNF. So first of all, we're going to look at EBNF, and we're going to look at how it describes the syntax of a language. It uses a range of symbols to describe how the syntax is to be represented. So first of all, if we want to describe what a letter is or how it can be written, we say letter and we put the equal sign. So that equal sign is really saying is defined as. Then we have a whole of other symbols here which we can use. The first one is the pipe symbol, and that is an OR. So we have A or B or C. So it's saying you can have alternatives. The next one is a non-terminal symbol, which are these square um, sharp brackets. And what you're saying there is, the element you include there has already been or is to be defined somewhere else. So if we use in a definition letter, letter somewhere here has been defined elsewhere. Then we have terminal symbols, which are, which is symbols which are written as they are. So an example in programming, if you have an if statement, you'd have an if and you expect to see the i and the f. Now here you can either represent them in double quotes or leave them blank. There's a couple of ways you can write those terminal symbols. Next one we have is repetition. If you want to do something multiple times, so for example a word is multiple versions of a letter, then you put the curly brackets around. The important thing here is the loop does not have to occur. What that means is when you have those curly brackets, it's zero or more times that the letter appears. So we have zero or more times that that letter occurs. Next one we have is optional, which is your square brackets. So the optional is you're looking at having uh, something or not. And so when you put something in those square brackets, that means you can either have it or you don't have to have it. And the last one is uh, round brackets. And those round brackets are for grouping. So you're grouping elements together.